Hello, welcome to ZTalk. This session, let's talk about a cool GitOps tool, or more specifically, uh, a CD, uh, continuous delivery solution for Kubernetes that is gaining popularity in the DevOps world. It's called Argo CD. Uh, firstly, before we uh, jump into this tool specifically, uh, let's talk about some important concepts like GitOps. Um, in a nutshell, uh, it's infrastructure as code done right with all DevOps best practices. As we all know, the concept of infrastructure as code comes from software development and is used to define and manage your infrastructure without any manual intervention, which makes your infrastructure much easier to be reproduced and scaled. And this concept has been gradually evolved to many other areas like network as code, security as code, configuration as code, you just name it, uh, the list goes on and on. Um, it's basically um, everything as code, like X as code nowadays. And then we apply these concepts into practices by using infrastructure as code uh, uh, tools based on your preferences like Terraform, Ansible, you know, basically uh, unify all those pieces to one place so that we can quickly have an environment ready automatically anytime is needed. So in detail, how do we make that happen? Uh, let's take a look at this graph. DevOps engineers typically uh, start creating and testing those, uh, uh, for example, uh, Terraform files on their local and also execute them from the local once the development is done for uh, validation and then store those files in a Git repository such that you have a uh, version control uh, for your infrastructure and other uh, team members can access and collaborate, right? But this is far from being done. As we know, in software development, every time there are changes made to the code, there are uh, processes in place for like code review, right? And there are there are going to be multiple uh, branches like uh, main branch, feature branches, production branch for different purposes, right? And once the changes are committed, all kinds of tests uh, kick off automatically to make sure the changes are not going to break, break, break anything. Um, like maybe uh, there, there are invalid YAML files out there, or maybe there are typos that are going to break your existing infrastructure or application environment. So continuous testing is definitely a must to have to ensure everything works as expected before we um, merge the changes in, right? And then we're going to need CI CD to package your code up build the images, build the images, and then deploy your code to your environment automatically. Um, uh, that's basically the flow. Um, since we treat our infrastructure as code now, so we're going to need the same workflow, same level of automation. That's basically what GitOps is all about. It's like an extension of Git. Because this session is going to be uh, focused on Argo CD, which is our uh, a CD uh, tool, right? Uh, I'd like to spend a bit more time on the CD uh, parts of the pipeline. Um, meanwhile, I think uh, it also helps to explain uh, why GitOps is a necessity uh, nowadays for managing our infrastructure and why it's so important. Um, um, continue on the pipeline we described about earlier. Uh, let's say we uh, we had our CI pipeline to package our code up and build images and push the images to our uh, warehouse, right? Now it the question turns to be uh, like, how do we apply these changes to um, to to our infrastructure, right? That's really a CD all about, um, like. 
Argo CD was born for Kubernetes, so apparently the use case is going to be for Kubernetes. So let's use Kubernetes as an example. Uh, before we have our infrastructure updates automated, we manually apply the changes from our local, right? By issuing kubectl apply, uh, or uh, you know using package manager like Helm for Kubernetes uh, specifically, right? That works. However, it's gonna raise some uh, serious security concern, which is sharing secrets. Um, because everyone uh, has to access your Kubernetes clusters plus your cloud infrastructure because more than likely your Kubernetes cluster is going to be hosted on cloud or you just use uh, vendors CAS service like AWS EKS or Azure AKS directly. So no matter which um, uh, scenarios, everyone has to access your Kubernetes cluster and um, your cloud infrastructure to be able to apply whatever changes uh, to the infrastructure, right? Um, and what was uh, a follow-up headache is that it's gonna be hard to answer the question like uh, who apply what changes if something goes wrong um, uh, because there is no history of what changes have been applied to this specific cluster uh, without uh, GitOps uh, practice uh, apply into uh, in place, right? Now with GitOps, we treat infrastructure as code exactly the same way as application code. Uh, and following DevOps uh, best practices, we have a uh, you know a separate repository for our infrastructure and a full pipeline for it, so that we won't add unnecessary um, you know dependencies and complexities between application and infrastructure, right? Now. Um, being said of that, let's jump back to the diagram of the uh, you know uh, uh, GitOps workflow uh, again, and let's review. And and here we go. Um, as you can see, I had two uh, Git uh, Git repositories. Uh, the upper one is for uh, uh, for storing our application code. Uh, once the you know uh, application code changes are committed, uh, it goes through the uh, uh, code review uh, testing stages, and then CI is going to take care of rebuilding the packages and store uh, the uh, the images to our warehouse, right? And the same thing happens to the uh, inf or infrastructure repository uh, down here. Um, uh, once the configuration changes are committed, it's go through the code review uh, testing stages and finally moves to uh, the stage of deployment, which is right here. Um, regarding deployment, uh, here comes some um, mechanisms uh, that we need to uh, understand or differentiate, which is a uh, pool based versus uh, push based deployment. Well, the push-based uh, deployment is what we traditionally know from the application pipeline like Jenkins or, or GitLab CI. Um, basically, the pipeline executes a command to deploy the new application version into the environment. Uh, on the other hand, the pool model, which Argo CD belongs to, uh, is that you have an agent installed in your Kubernetes cluster ahead of time uh, uh, it actually pulls the changes from your Git repository that you link to, and agent constantly monitors and compares the state of your infrastructure, uh, which is here uh, in your um, in your uh, Kubernetes cluster, with the state um, uh, uh, that def that you define in your code, which is right here in your Git repository, uh, to make sure the actual state always matches to the desired state. Uh, if there's a case where the agent finds out the actual state does not match to the desired state, it's gonna automatically pull the changes in and apply to your infrastructure. 
I think at these points, you already can think of uh, some important event, uh, benefits um, uh, for uh, you know pool model, which is it guarantees the consistency as for code. Um, it prevents uh, any manual intervention from happening, which is um, gonna you know m m mess up our infrastructure more than likely. Like if, for example, if someone um, changes the infrastructure configuration manually uh, out of whatever reason, maybe for testing, and forget forget about reverting the changes back to what it was, the agent is gonna discover it and revert it back to the desired states for us automatically. All right, uh, here I did a little summary to list the benefits of GitOps. Uh, we're, we, we, we have the capability of tracking our changes, of course, right? And also we can revert any changes to uh, recover our environments uh, real quick when it's, uh, when it's needed. And um, we have our Git repository as the single source of truth for our application and environments, which is definitely critical in terms of managing enterprise environments, right? And last but not least, GitOps increases security. Um, um, we don't have to give access to our infrastructure to everyone in the team because it's going to be CD, the, the CD pipeline and the, the pipeline only to deploy the changes, not in individuals, right? And, but, 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 but anyone in the team is able to propose changes by creating a pull request in your Git repository, right? Um, all right, so it took a while to go over GitOps, right? Now let's focus on this new tool, Argo CD. Uh, I guess the first question uh, comes to your mind is that, like I already had CI CD solutions uh, in our environment, like Jenkins or, uh, uh, GitLab CI/CD in place, so, and it works just fine. Uh, why do I have to consider uh, this new tool? And what specific use case Argo CD fits in? Um, those are all fair questions. Um, firstly, uh, like the name hinted, Argo CD lives in the CD part of the whole CI/CD workflow. Uh, in other words, whatever CI solution you had in place, like Jenkins, GitLab CI just stays at is. That's not the section we're gonna touch, right? Um, so I guess the main thing that we need to figure out here is what advantages convince us to replace our existing CD solution with the Argo CD, right? Uh, like I said, Argo CD was born for Kubernetes. So let's compare Argo CD with like Jenkins CD from Kubernetes per, uh, perspective. <laughs> Uh, actually, you can still use Jenkins to take off deployment on Kubernetes, but there are a bunch of dependencies that you need to take care of, like you need to install and set up tools like kubectl on Jenkins. Also, you need to configure access to Kubernetes for these tools on Jenkins because kubectl, as we know, is just a, a, a Kubernetes client. And you need to provide credentials to connect to a specific Kubernetes cluster, right? And imagine there are hundreds of Kubernetes clusters um, that you need to access. It's going to be a big headache for access management, right? Uh, what's more, I guess most of the cases you're going to consider using CAS solution provided by cloud vendor like AWS EKS or uh, Azure AKS for at least for at least for your prod environment. In that case, you're gonna need the access to Azure and AWS. So you, you you will have to add Azure and AWS credentials in addition to the Kubernetes credentials to Jenkins for, for access. So all in all, it's not just a configuration challenge, but also a security challenge, right? Furthermore, uh, which I, which I think is even uh, even is, is even more serious problem. Once we deploy to Kubernetes using Jenkins, let's say, we jump to a complete black box because Jenkins is not able to provide any status like 
if this deployment was was uh, was successful or not. So once kubectl apply is uh, the command kubectl apply is issued, Jenkins doesn't know the status of that execution at all. So that's really a, a big concern, right? How do you track? Um, uh, like, how do you know the uh, if that if, if if that change was successful or not, right? That's basically uh, that's basically why we're gonna need a new CD solution, which is more friendly um, and, and native to uh, Kubernetes. So um, Argo CD, on the other hand, is actually part of Kubernetes clusters. And here is a general workflow. So we deploy Argo CD in a Kubernetes cluster uh, ahead of time. And then we configure Argo CD to track a Git repository uh, that we want to link to. And then, like I said, uh, Argo CD as a, a pool based model, uh, Argo CD monitors and applies any changes automatically for us. That's basically the benefits. Um, uh, we get uh, out of Argo CD. All right, here is an updated picture of your new pipeline now. After developers commit the changes to the application repository, the Jenkins CI pipeline or whatever CI uh, tool you're using is going to be triggered to start the build process, like test your changes, uh, build the e new images and then push the new images to your image repository and finally update Kubernetes manifest, for example, uh, the uh, deployment the YAML file with the new image that you just built, right? Again, a very important best practice for Git repository here, like in the previous demo we talked about, we need to separate application source code with application configuration like Kubernetes manifest files because the application configuration code is not simply, you know, just the deployment files. It could be config map, secrets, ingress, service, basically everything that the application needs to run in a Kubernetes cluster. And these files can all be changed completely independent of your application source code. So we need to manage them separately to avoid unnecessary dependencies and complexity, right? Um, for example, when when we update and service the YAML file for your application, uh, which is just application configuration and nothing to do with the application code, right? You don't want to run the whole CI pipeline for the application because the code has not changed at all. So Jenkins CI pipeline is going to update the Kubernetes manifests to a separate Git repository instead where all configurations are stored. And then you have your Argo C, which was already in place on your Kubernetes cluster, uh, pointed to the same repository. And then Argo C discovers, uh, hey, there's a new change that was just merging and the status turn turns to out of sync because the actual state does not match your, uh, the, 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 the desired state anymore due to this change, right? And, and then Argo CD uh, take care of, you know, applying this change to your cluster to get your, uh, your status back to sync, right? That's basically the flow. And Argo CD supports Kubernetes manifests defined as um, plain YAML files Helm charts or other template files that generate Kubernetes uh, manifest, which is another benefit that Lexus CD tools cannot provide. Uh, lastly, back to the uh, Kubernetes access control we just talked about, uh, because we are following GitOps practices now, we can manage that the, uh, the, 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 the credentials with Git instead of creating cluster roles and users with different access permissions on Kubernetes side. And because of the pool model Argo CD is using, we only need to give engineers access to the Git repository and not cluster directly. And because of Argo CD living inside a uh, Kubernetes cluster, we don't need to give external cluster access to these tools, which means cluster credentials don't have to be outside um, your cluster anymore. 
And this makes managing security uh, of your uh, cluster way easier, right? Um, all right, last but not least, more clarification um, as our, you know, Argo CD lives in cluster, uh, your Kubernetes clusters. It's not just deployed in the cluster because other solutions like Jenkins can do the same thing, right? We can deploy Jenkins as a container in your, uh, uh, in your Kubernetes clusters. It's actually, Argo CD is really an extension to the Kubernetes API. Argo CD actually leverages the Kubernetes resources itself by using existing Kubernetes functionalities like using EDCD to store data and using Kubernetes controllers for monitoring and comparing actual and desired states. This is pretty much the reason why Argo CD uh, is capable of providing visibility of Kubernetes cluster and the key differences between Argo CD and Laxa CD solutions for Kubernetes. Um, all right, it's been a long presentation. Uh, I guess you're already getting bored, right? So time to hand, uh, hands on. Uh, in this demo, I'm gonna walk you through how to configure Argo CD and demonstrate you a CD pipeline, all right? Um, by the way, please uh, remember to sum up if you think this video is helpful and uh, subscribe my channel if you haven't done so. And um, uh, always uh, ask questions if you have any, all right? Cool. Okay, um, so I'd like to show you a CIC pipeline in this demo that follows the best practices we discussed about in the previous uh, PPT part from scratch. So it's gonna involve two Git repositories. One is for the application code. The other is for the application configuration for running on Kubernetes, all right? Uh, I'm gonna focus on the CD part though because that's Argo CD lives in. So I'm gonna walk you through my demo project and CI part real quick. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna use Jenkins as my CI tool. So I guess it could be um, closer to a common scenario, you know, where um, we already had a CI/CD solution in place in our organization, um, we we can just keep the solution as it is. Just add Argo CD as an additional CD solution um, for Kubernetes deployment. All right. Okay. So first thing first, uh, I'm gonna use a project which creates a tiny Node.js web application wrap it inside of Docker container, and then be able to access that web application from a browser running on my local machine. So don't worry about deploying these application to the Kubernetes cluster just yet. We will be there. Let's first focus on getting this Node.js application working inside of a Docker container. All right. So for doing that, um, I just list out a couple of action items here, right? So I'm going to create this Node.js web application, of course, and then I'm going to create a Docker file to containerize this Node.js web application. And then it's going to build an image, a custom image out of this Docker file. And then I'm going to run this Docker custom Docker file, a uh, Docker image as a container on my local Docker environment. And Last but not least, I'm going to do some verif verif verification by um, connecting to web, this web application from my browser before I start working on the CI pipeline to automate this process. Make sense? All right. Um, one more thing, by the way, um, is totally OK um, if you're not familiar with the um, Node.js for this session, right? I just want to use this simple project to demo the pipeline. This application itself is not the point at all for this demo. Um, I'm also going to share these two repositories involved in the description. You can just skip this part and jump to the pipeline part by clicking the timestamp if you're not interested in the Node.js at all. No problem. And you can just download this demo app from uh, my repo to, for, for practice later if you want. All right, cool. Uh, here we go. Uh, back to the application. 
Um, it's an extremely simple Node.js application. All I needed uh, is a package.json file and a index.js. So uh, uh, the package.json, so it's basically lists out all the dependencies for this project and an entry point uh, to this application. As you can see, um, the only dependency that I need for this project is a uh, express module, right? And and then it, it it links to the entry point, which this index.js uh, file that we're gonna talk about now. So let's move to this index.js. As you can see, uh, in this index.js file. Um, all this app does uh, is actually a line four, right? It is print out this message like "Hi, welcome to ZZ Talk Demo" um, to a web web browser, right? That's it. So pretty simple, right? So so now we we're we're familiar with the uh, all 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 these um, Node.js application. So let's jump to the Docker file to containerize this uh, web application. Um, here we go. This is the Docker file. Um, uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with Docker, I had a series of sessions to talk about Docker, like from the very beginning, like how does Docker work, and and how do we create a custom Docker image, and um, to you know some uh, advanced uh, feature like how do we uh, use Docker Compose to uh, you know. Uh, spin up multiple Docker containers, something like that. So here's the link. Feel free to jump over there to take a look. All right. Um, only uh, uh, notice here. So at line two, um, I'm gonna use a Alpine version of Node version 14 uh, as the base image for this project. All right. Uh, a quick note about Alpine version. If you're not familiar with it, with it. So. Alpine version basically means you're getting the absolute most stripped down version of that image possible. So it's gonna essentially have a, a you know Node.js and pretty much nothing else. It could possibly have some very basic programs like ping commands um, that you're gonna you're gonna have to you know look at the actual image to figure out. But I guess you've already got the idea of Alpine, it's lean. Um, uh, if you watch my session about Docker previously, uh, we talk about that from per performance perspective. We want the image as lean as possible. So just a quick reminder here. All right. So let let's move forward. Um, down down below here, so it's pretty uh, straightforward, right? So I just define a work directory uh, in container uh, as user app so and then i'm gonna copy these two uh file that's all my uh that's all for my web application right copy this to this location inside of container user slash app and then i'm gonna, I'm gonna install the dependencies by running npm install commands and this is the default command all right that's pretty much the uh, Docker file. So let's let me jump to my terminal and uh, build this custom image. So let me buy Docker build. All right. So the image is done. So if I issue Docker images. As you can see, I just had these image built like seconds ago, right here. All right now, let's test it out by Docker run, and I'm gonna map the port eighty eighty two, which you know this is the port uh, this application is using right here, uh, defined in the index the JS eighty 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 eight two, right. So I'm gonna map this 8082 to my um, to my local by uh, adding these uh, uh, hyphen p arguments, right? So let's run it. All right. So to verify, let me jump to my browser and uh, 
localhost 8082. All right. Um, Cool. It works as expected. As you can see, um, the message is exactly I'm looking for. All right. So all good. We've already make sure these web application Node.js web application uh, runs on um, container um, as expected. Let's uh, start figuring out the CI pipeline on Jenkins. All right. So. Um, I've uploaded the uh, Node.js web application we just went through to this repository, uh, you know, on, on GitLab. This is one of the repository we uh, talk about. Uh, this is obviously the one for uh, storing application code, right? Um, and here is the uh, CI pipeline on Jenkins. So this Jenkins instance is running on my um, MacBook. I install it via homebrew. Um, um, let me uh, firstly let me walk you through the setup real quick. Um, firstly, uh, to connect this GitLab repository, uh, or in your case, if your repository is hosted on GitHub, whichever it is, you're gonna need to install a bunch of Jenkins plugins, which do not come as defaults when you install your Jenkins. Same thing for uh, being able to build the Docker image uh, from the Jenkins host, which in my case is my laptop, right? Um, and, and then connecting to the container registry to store the images that this Jenkins uh, uh, CI pipeline built. Um, here uh, in my demo, I'm gonna store the image on Docker Hub, All right? Docker Hub is going to be my uh, my uh, container registry. So for doing that, I'm going to also need to install the plugins for Docker, right? So step one uh, is install different kinds of plugins. So uh, the install um, is pretty easy. Just go to your Jenkins instance, click Manage Jenkins, and uh, click Go to Plugin Manager. And here you can in, in the available um, uh, icon here uh, search for the keyword. So here I already installed all those um, uh, plugins that uh, need it. So just like for example, search for GitLab. So here we go, uh, like GitLab API plugin, um, GitLab authentication plugin. Um, GitLab merge request builder or GitLab plugin. So all of those plugins in, uh, related to GitLab, you're going to need it to uh, install on your uh, Jenkins instance when you play on your end. Also, uh, Docker. So let's search for Docker. As you can see, I installed like the, the plugin like CloudBees, Docker build and publish plugin, uh, Docker API plugin, um, Docker uh, plugin, those are uh, like must have, right? And the the others like Docker Compose build step plugin, this is kind of optional. It's nothing to do uh, with this, uh, this demo, right? Cool. So remember, uh, install these plugins required and reboot your uh, Jenkins instance, then you're good to go, right? So that's step one. Let's jump step jump to step two. So step two, we're gonna configure the access so that Jenkins is able to get access to GitLab uh, and GitLab repositories involved, and also is able to access Docker Hub container registry, right? So let's start with Docker Hub, uh, the container registry. So the Access is easy, just uh, like a uh, like user ID and password, right? So we're gonna store that as a credential on Jenkins. So back to the main page and click Manage Jenkins, and then scroll down, click um, Manage Credential, and you can see for for um, for uh, uh, Docker Hub. So we just need to store or username and password, password, uh, password like this, right? That's it for Docker Hub. And um, for uh, GitLab access, um, these involve more uh, like uh, 
a little more steps. So I first generate an access key on GitLab and store the access key on Jenkins. That access key basically is to enable Jenkins to get access GitLab, this GitLab, like, you know, the main entry, all right? So for generating a uh, access key, so you need to get access to your GitLab, right? So click your icon and click um, Edit Profile. And here we go. If you scroll down, uh, here is um, access key, um, access tokens. So here is the place where you uh, generate the personal access key right here. All right. So once the key generated, like here, so I already generated the key. Remember to keep keep that key um, in like a secure location on your local, it, you don't want to, you know, share that key information to that side. Otherwise, it's going to be a security vulnerability concern, right? So I already create my token and then back to Jenkins, I store that access key here, right? This is for access GitLab interface, right? And that's not in uh, not then yet. Besides that, we, that we're we're also gonna need to create an SSH key, like key pair, you know, private public key, on the server uh, where the Jenkins is hosted, like it's on my on my you know laptop, and copy the private keys to Jenkins and the public keys to GitLab, so that you know Jenkins is able to pull and push the application code. All right, so for doing that, let's switch to my um, uh, terminal. So here we go. Um, I already had uh, uh, SS key generated like this guy. I'm going to use the same uh, uh, keys for GitHub. All right, so what you need to do, you need to copy, grab these public key like the pub and save these public key to GitLab, right? So here you need to go to uh, like same thing, click your main, uh, the icon and go to uh, edit profile and click SSH keys. Here, you're gonna upload that public key right here, right? So I already did. And on the other hand, your private key, you're gonna need to grab your private key, copy that and uh, paste it to your repository. Basically these repository. So let's go to Jenkins. We need to create a pipeline. So for creating a pipeline, so click that new item and select pipeline, give a name of your pipeline. And then, so already, uh, create the pipeline. So let me go to the main page. This is my pipeline. So I'll just configure. And so if you can see here um, in the pipeline section, I'm gonna uh, like like the def put in the definition like pipeline script from SEM. So my SEM uh, like source control um, uh, is Git, right? And I, here I need to include the um, the um, the Git repository. So here the repository. Let me go back to. So this is my Git repository. So clone that and clone with HTTPS. Copy this URL and paste it on um, the pipeline here and credential this is the ss key i'm talking about we already stored the ss ss h key uh in the credential so when you click this drop down it should be uh, there so just select that ss key this this for you know uh, be able to um pull uh, like uh from the uh, gitlab repository and push whatever code change to this gitlab repository all right. So also you need to change the branch to the main branch. So for pipeline, you know, you can only uh, action on a single branch on that specific um, repository. Um, this is the SS key. 
Also, you need to uh, add that. You, you remember we generate a uh, access key on GitLab side. We need to add that GitLab, uh, you know, access key on or Jenkins as well. So we're on from the Jenkins. We're able to get access to GitLab, uh, the GitLab entry. So click dashboard and then click manage Jenkins. This time, let's go to configure system. All right, if you scroll down, there's a section for GitLab access. Here we go. And uh, you can you need to give a name of this connection and the GitLab host URL, which is, you know, GitLab.com. The, the, we're, we're getting access to the public GitLab, uh, GitLab um, interface, right? And the credential, this is the, uh, the, the token we're talking about. We already stored that uh, GitLab uh, access token as a credential on, Git, Git, uh, on, on, on Jenkins just now. So we just need to click and select that token. All right, and once you configure this, you can click this test connection uh, button. So if everything works just fine, you should be able to see success. So that's basically it. You already connect your stuff. Your, I mean, your, um, you, you already create a pipeline and hook up with the um, repository where your application code is stored. So that we already uh, like 90% finished on our uh, CI pipeline, right? All right, so uh, here is the only piece missing. Uh, we're gonna need to create a Jenkins file in our uh, repository to give Jenkins instructions. What do we want this pipeline to do? Jenkins takes Groovy as the programming language. Um, for our case, it's pretty simple. All we expected from this pipeline is to build the Docker image and then push the image to the Docker Hub container registry once the image is done. All right. Um, now let's take a look at the code. It's pretty straightforward. At line three, uh, that's the place where we define which container registry we're gonna push the image to. So for our case, I'm gonna use Docker Hub, right? So right after the URL to the container registry and this guy, Docker Hub. So if you remember at the very beginning when I set credentials on Jenkins side, the first one I created. So let's jump to uh, Jenkins. The first one I created is for getting access to my Docker Hub, right? Here we go. And it's, you can see the ID is Docker Hub. That's and back to my uh, Visual Studio code, this is where I'm going to use this credential to get access to my registry. And then in line four, it's, it's defined. So we're going to give a name of the image. This is the name we're going to call this new image that we're going to build, right? And once the image is done, so we're, uh, we just need to, we need, we just need uh, Jenkins to push this new image to these, um, registry that we defined uh, in Alliance 3. That's pretty much all we want. Uh, um, once we set up these uh, little instructions, uh, Jenkins is um, going to take care of the rest. He's no, he knows how to uh, check the Docker file to build the image and then push the image to the location that we want to store the image. All right, that's pretty much it. Let's kick up our first one. Uh, or, or CI pipeline to see how it goes. All right. So uh, back to my um, Jenkins. By the way, I already uh, uh, pushed the, uh, the 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 configuration and application to my application code uh, repository right here. All right. Um, let's kick it off. So go to the dashboard and go here. This is my pipeline and click build now. All right, as you can see, there is a job being kicked off. So let's check out how it goes by click console output. All right, so the pipeline already thrown out an error. So let's take a look what's going on here. Um, all right, it's complaints cannot run program Docker. Okay, so the reason Docker is not found is that as I mentioned, I installed my Jenkins instance on my MacBook via Homebrew. 
Um, so if we uh, let me jump to my console. So if we do a um, which command, which Docker. So let's check where the Docker uh, is installed. So as you can see, it's under user local bin directory. So actually, this user local bin directory is not included in the macOS path for Docker images by default. So to fix this issue, um, all we need to do is just we need to update the environmental variable so Jenkins is able to find these Docker commands. So let's do that. Again, uh, I installed Docker uh, via Homebrew. So this is the location we, 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 we're going to need to update the environment variable under user local opt Jenkins LTS Homebrew. All right. So if you install via Homebrew, you're going to do the same thing. So go here. All we need to do, we need to add these um, environmental variable here here so see see here this is what we need what needed we need to add this user local bin directory to or path variable that's about it so uh, don't worry I'm gonna um, copy and paste uh, the uh, share these uh, a little line of code in the description. So just grab the these. Uh, it, you you can grab copy and paste over there. All right. So let's save it, and we need to recycle uh, or Jenkins instance by like um, brew services list brew uh, services dot Jenkins instance. All right, and let's restart it. All right, so let's check the status uh, for Jenkins service. You see if started, all right. Okay, good, it's up and running now. So let's jump back to my in, uh, uh, Jenkins instance. Click dashboard. All right, and Let's go back to my um, pipeline again. And here we go. This is my Docker hub, right? So let's see. Uh, this is the other uh, images I built previously. So let's see if we're this time Jenkins is able to build and push the new image, right? So let's go to click build now. Console output. All right, looks good. Is building the image. See here, it run this command and start building the image. Doing okay, and is is pushing the images to the repository. All right, it's very promising. Um, let's give it a little bit of time. Uh, I think this time we should be all right. We should be see the new image being pushed to my Docker Hub account. All right, as you can see, uh, finish as success. So let's refresh my Docker Hub. All right, here we go. So this is the new image that was just built from and, and built on Jenkins and pushed from Jenkins. This is pretty much our CI pipeline. Now let's move to our CD part. For building our CD pipeline with Argo CD, as we know, Argo CD lives in the Kubernetes cluster. So we're going to need to install Argo CD to our cluster first. So some preparation I've already taken care of. Uh, I spin up a single node Kubernetes cluster via Minikube, right? And here we go. Uh, it's on V1.23, right? So now let's just follow the uh, instruction to install Argo CD. And the instruction is pretty easy. So just two commands, one uh, 
for, uh, we're gonna need to create a name space for Argo City, and then we just apply whatever manifest uh, to these namespace. All right, so let's. Uh, I already created a namespace ahead of time, so let's uh, jump to uh, these namespace Argo City. All right, and um, do a cube cuddle get po. So, all right, so once we issue the command, we should be expecting this list of pods being uh, created in the Argo CD namespace, all right? So, and that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. We had Argo CD install, uh, uh, installed on our, um, on our Kubernetes cluster. Now let's move on uh, to uh, create Kubernetes manifests uh, for our uh, uh, Node.js application and build our city pipeline. All right, cool. Firstly, uh, I'm gonna create the manifests for the Node.js web application to be deployed on the Kubernetes cluster and cat them out to make sure they work just fine before I start working on any automation. Uh, you know, the, the CD pipeline. Um, uh, I've already tested them out ahead of time, so they're good. Next, following the uh, DevOps best practices that we have been talking about again, and again. You know, uh, you know, uh, storing application code and configuration separately. Uh, it comes to the second um, repository I was talking about. Here, I um, I uploaded the two uh, manifests that I created um, uh, for deploying the Node.js application on the Kubernetes cluster. Um, one is deployment, the other is service. Pretty pretty simple. All right, and now let me switch to my Visual Studio Code. Uh, uh, let's move to the key point here, configuring um, Argo CD. Uh, we're gonna need to tell Argo CD which Git repository where you know the, the configuration files or uh, community manifests are hosted, um, similar like what Jenkins file does, right? Um, uh, 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 let's create um, uh, a config file for Argo CD. Uh, I'll, I'll call it application.yaml, right? Uh, referring the example in the documentation, uh, here, um, I, I'm gonna skip the first uh, f five lines because they are pretty standard configuration for all, uh, you know, uh, Kubernetes configurations, right? Let's start from line seven. So I give the name of this project, like this talk Argo CD demo, and here, following uh, that, we're gonna need to point Argo City uh, to the Git repository that we like Argo City to pull manifest from. The attributes uh, is uh, source, right? And there are some uh, sub attributes like uh, repo URL, target revision, path, under these source attributes. So. Apparently, uh, repo URL. So here, I'm gonna copy uh, my uh, the URL to my repository here and paste it uh, to my YAML file. All right, and target revision. So I point it to hat, which means Argo City is always gonna check the last commit in the Git repository. Okay, and path. Pass is the attribute that we can use to specify a directory that we want to sync or track. So for my case, you see, uh, all my uh, manifests were uh, stored in this dev directory. Uh, you know, um, in uh, the real uh, project, we have we can categorize by uh, environment, right? We can have dev environment, QA, prod. So each contains you know manifest with different configuration so that's the the real use case right so here i just put all my manifest in the dev environments right so this is the directory that i want to track by argo cd so here um, back to my yaml file i uh, uh, put the dev directory in the path attribute all right so that's pretty much uh source then we move to the destination, all right, at line 12. So apparently we need to tell Argo City to which community clusters we want application to be deployed, right? 
um, you just need to give the endpoint uh, of that uh, Kubernetes API server. Serve server. Uh, for my single node uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster on Mini uh, Minikube, so we can check them out here. Let me switch to my uh, console. Here, just do a kubectl get service uh, in the default namespace. Here we go. This is the um, uh, the, the service, all right, of the API server. Uh, so we just need to uh, follow the format um, of Kubernetes uh, here to to give this um, URL right here. So because we know Argo City lives inside the cluster, and we also know Kubernetes has embedded DNS service out of the box, Argo City can access whatever internal service without additional configuration. So here, I just need to follow the format. Uh, the endpoint is going to be, so the service name is Kubernetes, right? And this service is in the default namespace. So dot de default and the type of uh, these stuff is a service that as we see all right so that's pretty much it and um, by the way Argo City uh, is able to manage multiple clusters and sync the definitions to multiple clusters at once just list out you know um, the external ad addresses of those clusters uh, within these uh, destination attributes and that's it pretty powerful right <laughs> All right, uh, Argo City knows the cluster to deploy the manifests now. What about namespace? Uh, we also need to tell Argo City which specific namespace in the cluster to deploy our application, right? So because for my case, this is for development. So I want it to be deployed in the namespace called dev. But if I check the namespace uh, currently exists in my cluster, that dev namespace um, did not exist just yet. So to avoid any manual intervention, we can actually add additional uh, attributes like sync policy to create the namespace by Argo C if it doesn't exist. By we just need to turn these attributes namespace. Uh, sorry, under sync policy, we just need to. Uh, turn these sub attribute create namespace from false to true right so you know by default these uh, attributes uh, was set as false right um, meanwhile we want the pipeline to be more robust uh, like we want Argo City um, to sync any changes in the git repository automatically so we can do that by um, by by attribute automated, right? And there are two uh, additional sub uh, attributes we can configure. So self heal. So what what this about? So we can have Argo City to automatically undo or override any manual changes to the cluster. It's quite a use case to make uh, to make sure the consistency of our configuration. That we that we talk about in the PPT part, remember, and uh, prune. So if we rename some components, or if we just delete some configuration on purpose on a GitLab side, we want Argo City to delete those as well in the cluster, right? So this is the attribute attribute for. So we turn uh, prune attributes from false to true. Remember all these three attributes, uh, prune, self heal, and create namespace uh, were set as false by default. All right, so um, uh, one more thing, by default, Argo City, you know, Argo City is a poll model, right? Argo City pulls Git repository every three minutes, uh, which is uh, customizable, of course, right? Or you have you 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 can you, you have the option to configure a webhook between your repository and Argo City to trigger the sync immediately if that's your use case is required. All right. All right. Finish up the configuration for Argo City. Let's test it out. So we're gonna apply these configuration to the Kubernetes cluster. 
uh, this should be the only apply that we issue manually, right? Because we expect Argo CD to take care of uh, after that, right? So switch back to my console. So already apply the chain, uh, these file uh, to my Kubernetes cluster. So now let's log on on the UI of Argo CD. So let me do, uh, let's switch to the, uh, to the uh, Argo CD namespace, do a cube cuddle get as we see, uh, hyphen in namespace Argo CD. All right, so as you can see here, um, uh, there is a service called Argo CD server. This uh, is the uh, Argo CD UI. So we can do get access on uh, this UI by, uh, by uh, uh, issue a port forward port forward commands. So let's do that uh, by uh, kubectl port forward as we see Argo City server. And uh, as you can see here, the port is 80 or 443. So I'm gonna use HTTPS. So so I'm gonna map these 443 uh, HTTPS ports to the 8080 port on my local, all right? So hit enter, all right? So port forwarding is working. So let me switch to my browser and do HTTPS local host 8080. All right, so this is the interface of Argo City. So the default username, so the username, if you follow the, uh, take a look at the documentation, the default username is admin and the password. So go here uh, back to your uh, terminal. So open another one. So you can do cube cuddle get secret. There is an initial secret uh, uh, store in the in the Argo City namespace. So check the secret by cube cuddle get secret. Um, secret namespace Argo City. All right, see that um, there is a secret called Argo City Initial Admin Secrets. Let's take a look by uh, cube cuddle edit. Um, let's copy these initial admin secrets and again enter namespace Argo City. All right, so this is the password. And remember, so all the secrets in Kubernetes is um, uh, encrypted as base uh, 64. So we need to decrypt it, decrypt it. So, so let's copy this string of password and get out of this. So do a echo this and let me do base 64 hyphen D means decrypt. All right, so this is the plain text uh, string for the password, admin password. So let's copy that out and paste it here, sign. Here we go. So this is the Argo CD uh, instant, uh, uh, interface. So here it provides the visibility, a uh, visibility of the, uh, what, how, how things going in your cluster. Um, let's take a look. Uh, all right, so uh, apologies, a little correction I had to make uh, in the uh, Argo C uh, um, uh, configuration file uh, at line seven, so the name of the project. I had to change it to default. So here, just remember, every application belongs to a single project. So if unspecified, the application is going to be belong to a project named default, right? So that's why I changed the project name to default. Otherwise, um, uh, we have, so like previously, I give a custom name of my project, right? In that case, I have to create a configuration to tell uh, Argo CD what uh, these new projects are about, right? It have to create a configuration YAML file, something like this, about the project. So to keep our uh, demo uh, as simple as possible, so I'm just gonna use default. Because here, if you did not define the project ahead of time, if you have a custom project, 
um, you are not able to discover that um, project in in the in the in the UI. It's gonna have some error. All right. That's why I changed the project name back to default. All right. So now let me switch back to my browser. Here we go. So you can see uh, we already see the status of the ripple that web app Argo uh, repository. That's the uh, the the repository we're linking this one, right? And if we check the status, it's healthy and synced. So if we click it, we can see more detail about what's going on inside of these um, cluster. So the really cool things is is gon gonna show you a to topology map right here to show you each part inside of these uh, like like involved to these uh, these application, right? So and a different. Uh, community component like service deployment that's pretty much what we can the manifest we created and you can s visualize the status of each every single uh, components related to these applications it's pretty cool right all right all right now let's do some verification firstly I want to verify if that dev namespace was created by Argo City so do a cube cuddle get namespace um, here we go the dev namespace was created all right so now let's uh, do a cube cuddle get po to check what's inside of these um, dev namespace and we can see there are two pods up and running that's exactly what we defined in the deployment that yaml as you can see the replicas is was, was set as two right looks good now let's manually delete something on purpose to see how Argo CD like guarantees the cons consistency of our con uh, configuration. So here let's let let's say cube cuddle get as we see um, dev. So here uh, we had a manifest to create a service uh, for this web application, right? So let me delete this service by cube cuddle delete as we see and web as we see in the dev namespace all right as you can see the service was deleted now let's check these service again all right as you can see this web app hyphen service this service was recovered or revert like the, the argo c detects the change manually the, the manual change we did uh, just now and revert it back to what it was. So again, it guarantees the consistency of the configuration. All right. So that's something um, uh, Argo CD guarantees uh, to keep the consistency. And if we um, we want some change to be made to this cluster, for example, we want to change the replica from two to one. In that case, uh, let me do that by uh, sorry. Let me do that by go to the um, directory, um, the pipeline repository, and let me update these deployment the YAML file and change the replica from two to one right here and save it. And, and I'm gonna commit to my Git repository by Git uh so exit out git status and get add and get commit i'll do like update replica all right and uh, commit and then i'm gonna push this change to my repository now let's see here refresh as you can see the replica was change from two to one now remember um uh argo city post the um uh the um uh, or sync post the configuration from the repository every three minutes so we're gonna need some time um to uh to uh, wait wait for argo city to check the configuration and once he discovered there is a uh, like and match like the configuration this match like like here the replica was configured as two now it's changed to one so it's gonna 
update the configuration in the cluster to make the actual state matches the 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 required state. All right. So let's give it a time and verify shortly. Okay. So take a look at the number of pod right now inside of these uh, dev namespace. You can see it's down to one. That's exactly what we are waiting for, right? Um, cool. Uh, this is the Argo CD, a CD pipeline. I want to show you right here. A quick summary. So in this demo, we built a whole CI/CD pipeline. Actually, two pipelines. One is for CI, the other on Jenkins, the other is for uh, CD for on, on, on Argo CD to deploy stuff on uh, Kubernetes, right? P uh, from scratch, pretty cool, huh? I believe now you have a good understanding how does uh, you know, uh, DevOps CI/CD work following the best practices, and you can see why we break you know uh, application code and application configuration separate uh, into two repository. Now you see the value right here. So when you practice on your end, you can do more uh, hands-on. For example, you can do some enrichment of your uh, application. Uh, and for example, you add some features and build a, a containerize it and create a new image, right? In that case, so you run your uh, CI pipeline to build the image and push the, uh, the new Docker uh, image to the, uh, to the uh, container registry. And then what you're going to do here in your CD pipeline, you just change the, the version. You have to give a version right here, right? For my case, I didn't give version. I always pick up the latest, right? In here, in your case, you define the version one for your application that's state one. And after you add a new feature, you can use the, the version two, for example. In that case, once you um, uh, update and commit to the um, configuration repository, uh, Argo CD can discover and it find out, oh, so there's something changed with the, uh, the image. So I'm gonna download the new image to, to, to grab the, the new features you developed. On your application, that's pretty much, and, and all those uh, process being automated by these two pipelines. Pretty cool, right? So, do some more practice on your end, and um, thanks for watching. Feel free to uh, leave comments if you have any questions, and I'll see you uh, next week. All right, thank you for watching my video. If you think this video is helpful, you're more than welcome to leave any comments. Remember, sum up, subscribe my video, and also hit the notification bell. See you next time.